I first started to read Molly here for the Stony Batter Fest in number 55 Prussia Street. Sayer Old Skull Naharin, which is the site of the former City Arms Hotel, home of Molly and Leopold Bloom, where they lived in room number nine from 1893 to 1894. The final chapter of Ulysses, Penelope, is where we get to hear Molly's thoughts. They're delivered in a stream of consciousness that completely lacks punctuation. It is made up of eight extremely long sentences, the last being 4,391 words, making it the longest sentence in the English language. The last words of Ulysses belong to Molly. God of heaven, there's nothing like nature. The wild mountains, then the sea and the waves washing and the beautiful country with fields of oats and wheat, all kinds of things, primroses and violets, nature it is. As for them saying there's no God, well, I wouldn't give a snap of my two fingers for all their learning. Why don't they go and create something, I often asked him. Atheists, or whatever it is they call themselves, go and wash the cobbles off themselves. First they go howling for the priest and they dying. And why? Why, because they're afraid of hell on account of their bad conscience. Ah, yes, I know them well. Who was the first person in the universe before there was anybody that made it all? Who? Ha, that they don't know. And neither do I, so there you go. They might as well try to stop the sun from rising tomorrow. The sun shines for you, he said. That day we were lying among the rhododendrons on Hoth Head, in the grey tweed suit and his straw hat. The day I got him to propose to me, yes. First I gave him a bit of seed cake out of my mouth. And it was leap year like now, yes. Sixteen years ago. My God. After that, Long kiss, I nearly lost my breath. Yes. He said I was a flower of the mountain, yes. So we are flowers all. A woman's body, yes. And that was the one true thing he said in all his life. And the sun shines for you today. Yes. And that was why I liked him because I saw he understood or felt what a woman is. And I knew I could always get round him. I gave him all the pleasure I could, leading him on until he asked me to say yes. And I wouldn't answer first, only looked out over the sea and sky. I was thinking of so many things he didn't know of. Mulvey and Mr Stanhope and Hester and Father and old Captain Groves, and the sailors playing all birds fly, and the sentry in the front of the governor's house with that thing round his white helmet, poor devil half roasted, and the Spanish girls laughing in their shawls and their tall combs, and the auctions in the morning, and the poor donkey slipping, half asleep, and the old castle thousands of years old, yes. And those handsome moors, all in white and turbans like kings, asking you to sit down in their little bit of shop. And Rhonda, with the old windows of the posadas, glancing eyes, a lattice hid for lovers to kiss. And the iron and the wine shops, half open at night. And the castanets. Oh, and the sea. The sea crimson, sometimes like fire and the glorious sunsets, and the fig trees in the Almeida Gardens, yes, and all the queer little streets, and the pink and blue and yellow houses, and the rose gardens, and the jessamine, and geraniums and cactuses, and Gibraltar as a girl, where I was a flower of the mountain, yes. And when I put that rose in my hair, like the Andalusian girls used to, and how he kissed me under the Moorish wall. And I thought, well, as well him as another. And then 
I asked him with my eyes to ask me again. Yes. And then he asked me, would I? Yes. To say yes, my mountain flower. First I put my arms around him. Yes. And drew him down to me so he could feel my breasts all perfume. Yes. But his heart was cooking. And yes, I said, I'm, yes. <laughs>